Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about integration and how to integrate numerically in MATLAB. Well, before we get started, let's talk about what numerical integration means. There's two kinds of ways to integrate in MATLAB. The first is symbolic, and you do that in a package called MUPAD, M-U-P-A-D, that lives inside MATLAB. And that lets you push symbols around, like we're about to do here on the board. The other one is numerically, where you're pushing numbers around. We're actually adding up sums and using those to approximate the area under a curve. So let's get started. Now before we get too far, we've got to have a problem. Well, I made this one up. x squared plus 1. We're going to integrate that from 0 to 4. So why would you want to do this? Well, typically there's some physical problem you're trying to analyze where you would need to know the integral. For a simple example, think about uh, if you have a velocity function and you're trying to find distance. Let's say a car is running down the road and you know what its velocity is over time and you want to know how far it went. Well, the way you get from velocity to distance is you integrate because the definition of velocity is the derivative of distance with respect to time and integrals are the opposite of derivatives. So let's leave this up here and let's figure out a strategy for how we're about to do this. Okay, there's an approximate curve here. It goes from 0 to 4, and let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and goes from 1 to 17 on the vertical axis because uh, 4 squared plus 1 is 17. So if you remember from, I don't know, calculus class in high school or uh, college, when you're finding areas under a curve, which is the integral, what you're doing is you're adding up areas of boxes, and the narrower those boxes get, the closer you get to the uh, actual area. Now adding up those boxes, you might have heard your teacher call it a Riemann sum after a, a German mathematician named Riemann. Well, if you remember, those were just boxes. Well, let's start there. So let's draw our vertical boundaries here. So we've got four dx's, four, four widths here, and they're all one in this case. So that's one, two, three, four. So the width of each of our boxes is one. Well, now we need a height. Well, how are you going to get a height? For a, a flat top box, you got two choices. One of them is to start on the left side and make our boxes so that they're, in this case, just a little shorter than the actual curve. Well, over here, they're a lot shorter than the actual curve. So the problem is that when you add all those boxes up, you're missing those areas there. And that's an error. Well. You remember, the narrower you make those boxes, the smaller those little error regions are, and you get closer and closer to the actual answer. Well, the other way we can do this, and let's do it in, I guess, black, is I can start on the right side of each of my regions here, and I can make the box height be the value of the function at the right side of each box. Well, I still get errors. They're just different errors. Now, we're over here. It's purple, I guess. Now, one thing you could do is run this both ways. Add up some of those four lower boxes using the left side of the curve as the height, and then try it again on the right, and you know the answer is going to be somewhere in the middle. Mathematicians call that bounding a solution. You know that the error is somewhere between the sum of those green boxes and the sum of these taller black boxes. There's got to be a better way to do this. There is. Let me replace this. Okay, there's that curve again that we started with. Now, instead of making the boxes flat topped, let's connect the points on each side of the box with a straight line and make each one of these, instead of a rectangle, let's make it a trapezoid. That's a lot closer. 
Now that trapezoid isn't exactly the shape of the curve, but it's a lot closer than that flat top box. So it makes sense that adding up trapezoids would work a lot better than just adding up those flat top boxes. And this has a name, it's called the trapezoidal rule. And the fine people at MATLAB thought this was a pretty good idea too. So there is a command in MATLAB called TRAPZ that lets you implement this really easily. Before we go to my board, we probably need to know what that the actual answer is. Let's figure that out real quick. Let's see, I got plenty of room over here. So let's integrate from 0 to 4, x squared plus 1, dx. Now let's see, if I remember this right, that's 1 third plus x from 0 to 4. Well, if I plug 4 in there, 4 to the third is 64. So I get 64 over 3 plus 4, and that equals 25.333 repeating. So there's the number we're trying to find using MATLAB. So let's go to my computer now and give it a try, okay? All right, so here we are in MATLAB. And the first thing we're going to need is a list of x values, which in MATLAB is an x vector. So let's do this. I'll let that echo to the screen because this is really short. Now we're going to need some y values. And rather than have me type those in manually, let's define something called an anonymous function. OK, I've got some spaces in there. And what this is going to allow me to evaluate f automatically using whatever values of x I want to put in there. Now that dot right there is what's going to allow me to push a vector through this. Anytime you want to do uh, operate on uh, individual elements of a vector one by one, you got to put that dot in there. So that's what that's for. So I now have this. And let's make this. And there's some numbers that, that are obviously x squared plus 1. It should be 17, and there it is. 4 squared plus 1 is 17. So let's try this now. Okay, to keep things tidy, I've just cleared the screen again. And what we can do now is we know that dx equals 1. That's the uh, width of our boxes. And I can just add the, the uh, heights of all the boxes up, multiply them by dx, and I'll get an approximate area. Well, there's a sum command in MATLAB. I can just sum all the heights and multiply by dx. So I could say area equals sum all my y's times dx. I get 35. That's crazy. Hmm, what's going on? Well, what I've done is sum all those points. Right there. But there's 1, 2, 3, 4, five of them. I've summed five points, but there are only four boxes. And the reason is because I've got a point on each side of the little boxes I drew. So I can either sum heights at the beginning or heights at the end. Those were the pictures I drew on the board with the green and, and black boxes. Go back and look at that if you need to. So let's try this. Rather than that, let's say sum of all the y's from one to the end of the vector minus 1. That'll give me the heights at the beginning of the, um, the left side of each of the boxes, 18. Well, that's lower than 25.3. The sum of all those four boxes underpredicted the area. There was an error above the boxes, between the curve and the top of the boxes. When I used the right side, the boxes and drew them in black. There was also an error, but now my summation overpredicted. There were portions of the boxes that lay above the curve. So the way I would calculate that is rather than calculating 1 to the end minus 1 of the vector, go 2 to the end. There. When I underpredicted the area, I got 18. When I overpredicted the area, I got 34. So this is what mathematicians call bounding the solution. One solution is below the desired number, and one solution is above. Well, I told you that the more boxes we use, the better the approximation is going to be. 
Let's clean this up a little bit and do a more sophisticated analysis. Let's say dx is now 0.25. And let's say that x goes from 0 to 4 in steps of dx. Right. And we'll say y, y, if I can type. Alright, I'm going to execute this command. I've actually got three commands on the same line. See over here? I got 17 values. Well, 16 plus that zero right there gives me 17. Let's call this area 1. And I'll call that dx times sum y. Let's put a little subscript in there. That looks a little better. 23.735. Well, that got closer. Let's see what happens when we use the right side of those boxes and go from 2 to the end. Hmm. So I've gotten closer yet. Well, if a little bit is good, more must be better. Let's make this now 0.1. And again, that number over there just got bigger. There's area one. Ooh, pretty close. There's area two. Okay, closer still. Well, let's let's go to the extreme here. What I did is just hit DX and then the up arrow. So that gave me uh, the last command that started with DX. So there, I've got a whole bunch of boxes now. I got 401. This ought to get me pretty close. So type in area one, hit the up arrow. There's that, 25.253, pretty close. 25.413. So we can see that as dx gets smaller and smaller and smaller, I'm getting closer and closer and closer. This is good. But it's getting kind of tedious. There's a better way to do this. Let me clear this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, clear the memory and clear the screen. Now, let's say x equals, let's go to my 4 there. Now I have to reassign the, the uh, anonymous function because I cleared that out too. There's that. So I've got everything there. dx does equal 1. Let's do trapz of y times dx. 26. Well, that's very close to 25.3333. And I did it with only four steps from 0 to 4. Hmm. So about what we figured, trapezoidal rule works better than just uh, summing boxes. And the logistics get easier. You don't have to worry about whether you're using the left side or the right side of the box to define the height. Define dx as 0 0.25. And let's define x to go from 0 to 4 in steps of dx. And there's y again. Okay, so I'm back to having 17 numbers describing this. So 16 individual trapezoids. Bang, 25.375. That's a lot closer than I was getting with by summing boxes. Works like a champ. Well, let's, let's go one more. Go to 0 0.1. And let's just for make this easier. Let's take this, copy it, paste it right there. There we go. Look at that. 25.34. Even closer. Let's go, let's go here. 25.3334. So we're now off in the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're off in the sixth significant digit. Much better than we got with the summation. All right, that seems like enough. Let's stop there. So what we've done now is we set up an integral. We evaluated it symbolically. 
We drew some pictures on the board to show strategies for evaluating that integral numerically, and we implemented it in MATLAB using the summation command and the trapz command. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.